Hello everyone, I'm here on a beautiful October day out here on the Adriatic coast on board a Sport 650 from Highfield Boats and for, for Highfield Boats TV today I'm just going to run through some basic start procedures, safety procedures that I think we should all uh, we should all think about when we're when we're on board, and I think it's everybody's safety to really uh, keep our friends, our loved ones, our passengers safe. And actually, safety starts with with us. So I'll just run through some basic procedures on here that hopefully will give some of you that are new to boating a better idea of some of those issues that you may encounter when you're on a boat for the first time. So let's talk life jackets. It should always be the first thing that we think about. On the pontoon, for kids, you've got to imagine that. Most accidents happen in a marina, okay? Because people aren't focused, they're not concentrating. Maybe they've had a drink. Maybe they've taken their eye off one of their children. And before you know it, they've walked off the edge of a pontoon and they're in the water, okay? So I, I would like to stress to all of you that some of you will say a life jacket isn't cool. For me, it's like putting a seatbelt on in a car. It's just a natural thing. It doesn't change the way you use your boat. If we look at this particular life jacket here from Baltic, it's really slim line, it doesn't get in the way, it's comfortable to wear. It gives you a huge amount of security when you need it. And trust me, if ever you do need to use one of these, you won't be worrying about how much you spent on it and you won't be thinking oh yeah but I look cool because I'm not wearing one this will save your life it is that simple now let's think about life jackets automatic on a rib I would advise that you go for automatic inflation because if you do go overboard there is a chance that you may be disorientated perhaps you've banged your head especially at high speed you don't want to have to worry about pulling this, okay? You want the life jacket to do that for you. So I'd go for an auto inflation because then when it hits the water, when it's been immersed for a certain period of time, it will automatically inflate. It will automatically pop you to the surface and it will turn you onto your back, which is really, really important because your airway will be clear of the water. The most important thing then to do is not to panic, okay? Float, just float, okay? We call it float to survive float to survive the other important thing I need to add for you here is a crotch strap now why a crotch strap well if you imagine this, this life jacket without a crotch strap there is a possibility particularly on smaller people or younger people that when the jacket inflates and you have all that upward buoyancy if it's not anchored to your body in some way it can slip over your shoulders so it can actually slip over your head and you can come out of a life jacket. No matter how good that life jacket is, you can come out of it. The crotch strap, which will go, I will show you in a minute, goes underneath your crotch and clips back in. That essentially anchors, that anchors the life jacket to your body. So even if it tries to go up and above your shoulders, it cannot because this strap has kept it in position. And I'll show you what I mean. So life jacket, here we are. Over one shoulder. It's that simple, honestly, there's really no excuse. Over the other shoulder, central clip into position, crotch strap underneath your groin area up to the crotch strap clip. So now you're anchored, that life jacket is anchored to your body, okay? But the next thing you need to do, and this is where as the skipper of the boat you can help your passengers that may not have the experience, okay? Remember it's your responsibility, their safety is up to you. This life jacket, as you can see now, is quite loose, okay? So a loose life jacket is quite a dangerous thing. All of these life jackets will have adjustable straps as you can see here and as you can see here, okay? So the side strap, you can pull around. I can pull that nice and tight snug fit to my body. So that is now adjusted to fit me. That's a really nice fit. It's not too tight. I don't even know I'm wearing it, honestly. I don't even know I'm wearing it. Crotch strap, I can tighten that up as well, same way. So now, I have a really nicely fitting life jacket. You don't want to make it too tight so that it restricts your movement, but here I know that if the worst happens, my jacket's going to stay on, it's going to inflate, 
it's going to pop me up it's going to lay my head facing the air okay and then i can just relax i can relax float to survive okay don't panic don't try and swim don't expend your energy save your energy for keeping warm float get your bearings and then you can work out your next move the next thing we can think about here is again a life-saving device genuinely a life-saving device the kill cord you can see it hanging down here okay by the switch now this kill cord is designed to be attached to the driver of the boat so should the worst happen and should the driver be ejected okay this cord goes with the driver and that automatically shuts the engine down because then you avoid a situation where you see those horrific movies online of the boat continuing on its way and spinning and spinning in ever decreasing circles so that the people that have been ejected and are in the water are in harm's way. So the kill cord for me, again, is like a life jacket. It just becomes a part of your process, okay? So we'll show you how it works. So this is the kill cord correctly fitted. You'll notice around my leg, okay? Because it's less likely to slip off my leg. If you put it around your wrist, there is always the risk of when you go overboard, actually that, that kill cord slips off of your wrist. So around the leg on a rib is a good place to anchor. You can see the dedicated clip here. It's really, really straightforward, honestly. It's a really straightforward thing to fit that to your body. It's a big safety feature now the engine is running so you can hear I'll put the revs up now okay so we've got the engine running behind us now and you can imagine you're at speed you can imagine this is you at planing speed maybe 25 knots something unexpected happens you maybe hit something in the water or maybe you have a steering issue the boat lurches in a direction that you're not comfortable with you're not ready for it and you eject so you imagine your body is ejecting what that happens is kills the cord engine is dead just like that it's that simple okay it's the most simple device on the boat but it is also a simple device that can save your life or one of your children's lives and it's really really simple to use so now we have we have our life jacket on we have our kill cord attached. Okay, we have everything ready. Now, our battery switch down here is currently in the off position, okay? So your start procedure now, when you come to your marina, will be battery switch into the on position. That feeds your engine, that feeds your electronics, and that gives you the cranking power that you're going to need to fire the motor. Now, we hear a lot and it's a very, very easy mistake to make, and so there's no shame in it, we've all done it. But the top mount control boxes from most of the engine manufacturers do not have a neutral lock. And what that means, sometimes we get phone calls saying, my boat won't start, my boat won't start. Okay, nothing's happening, it's dead. Now, with the Honda, it tells you there's something wrong because when it's ready to start, you get two beeps. Okay, it's ready to start. When it's not ready to start, you only get one. And what will happen there, that means you've just, as you saw, I've just, just left the gear in gear, okay? So I'm not quite in neutral. So the engine protects itself and it won't even turn over. So now I'm turning the key and nothing's happening. So it's very easy when you're out on the water and maybe you're a bit stressed and you don't know what's going on. It's very easy for you to think, oh no, I've got a massive failure. This, the engine won't start, it's dead, everything's dead. Okay. First thing to check, honestly, is that you're in neutral. So I've dropped it back into neutral, twin beeps, engine starts up. So that's the first thing to check. The other thing to check, and again, trust me, we've all done it, okay, is you've accidentally pulled the kill cord out and you've forgotten about that. So you're in neutral, so the engine is absolutely fine. It wants to start, it will turn over, it will turn over, but it will not fire. It will not fire. So again, it's very easy for you to think, oh no, my engine's breaking down, I've got a problem. Check those two basic things first. So are you in neutral? 
is your kill cord correctly engaged? So also, we have to remember that our outboard motor is water cooled, okay? So the outboard motor actually runs seawater through its systems, through through cooling system, and it picks up that raw water, it's called raw water, it picks up that raw water from the base of the engine, from the leg of the engine. You can see here, if I go backwards, you can see down by the propeller, you can see the black intake. Now that black intake is the water intake, okay? An impeller inside the gearbox then pumps that water around the engine to keep the engine cool. And it is critical, it's critical that the cooling system works on all outboard engines, it's a critical thing. Now, a very easy mistake to make again, everybody's done it at least once. You forget that your engine is in the trimmed up position and you start. And you can hear that. That noise will tell you that your exhaust pipe is out of the water. That noise will also tell you that means that your engine is not sucking up cooling water. So you only have a very short period of time where you can run the engine in that way before you risk damaging the internal components. So it's very important that you remember before you start your engine to trim so that at least, at least your water intake, as you can see on here, we're now fully submerged. So your water intake is underwater, even though the engine is not fully trimmed down, it's now safe to start. And the difference is enormous. There's no noise. The exhaust is ejecting underwater, so you can't hear that. And you can see that your leg is under. You can see that your propeller is under. And quite visible on this side is what we call the telltale. Now the telltale is a signal for you on board that your cooling system is working correctly. So it's actually taking some of the cooling water, not all of it, some of the cooling water and ejecting it through this pipe as a visual indication that the cooling system is working. So it's one of your primary checks when you start your engine. Is your telltale pumping? If for some reason your telltale is not pumping, do not run your boat don't risk running your boat okay there could be a number of reasons why that telltale wasn't pumping but it could mean that you have a serious issue and you run the risk of overheating the most common reason for the telltale to stop pumping is that a boat is not flushed out when it's used in salt water like we are today here on the Adriatic when it's used in salt water and it's not used for a long time, salt crystals can block the pipe. So the first thing to do, make sure that you have a tool on the boat, a small piece of metal, maybe a piece of coat hanger or something that you can push gently into the telltale exit hole, just to make sure you haven't got one or two grains of salt in there that are blocking the pipe. All of these things are your first primary checks, okay? But the telltale, I cannot express to you how important that is for the running of an engine. I think I want to talk to you now about tubes. Now on a rib, your running pressures are very, very important for prolonging the life of your boat. I cannot stress enough running pressures, okay? So we have a working pressure of 3.2 PSI, okay? 3.2 PSI, they should be solid. Okay, you can get pumps now, electric pumps or even manual pumps with, with visible gauges that give you your pressure. 3.2 PSI. If you run under pressure, okay, so if you're running your tubes constantly at 2 PSI, what that means is when they make contact with the water, they vibrate much, much more than they do when they're at pressure, okay? And over time, that vibration will start to deteriorate the fabric, it will start to work away at the seams. You can imagine something, you can imagine, imagine the friction of something bashing the surface of the water constantly at 25 knots. It's much like running your car tire underinflated, okay? If you run your car tire underinflated, it's not going to last as long, it's going to overheat, it's going to eventually blow, okay? So you should really, really take care to keep the pressure in your tubes. Each chamber, by the way, not just one, okay? Make sure the pressure is equal in each chamber, 3.2 PSI, that will prolong the life of your tubes by a long, long time. So I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed those little tips there for 
first time boaters or people that are new to this this game it's a it's a superb hobby it's a wonderful thing to have in your life the freedom of being on the water with your family is is something that only people that use boats really understand it's an incredible incredible feeling look at where i am now here i've just found an island out of the wind the wind is blowing about 20 knots believe it or not over there and i'm just in the lee of a beautiful island in the adriatic here to bring you this video that sense of freedom that sense of having your own space it's an incredible incredible thing but we all have a responsibility to be safe we all have a responsibility to look after others so i hope that this video has helped some of you with some of the more basic safety issues that concludes uh, this episode of highfield boats tv make sure you check back in next week for the next one we'll keep you updated with new products news walkthroughs information what our network is doing everything about the world of highfield boats check in highfield boats tv thank you for watching